Sarah Everard's abduction from the streets where she lived has led thousands of women to voice their outrage on Twitter under hashtags like she was just walking home and reclaim these streets or declaring enough is enough and too many women while exchanging their experiences of sexual assault and harassment. In Sheffield, a group of students is fighting back against sexual intimidation of young women in the city. Women and men have formed the Our Bodies, Our Streets campaign, and they log locations where people have been catcalled, followed and assaulted, often when out running. I've been, yeah, sworn at, um, sort of propositioned and told to put some clothes on, even like in the summertime, wearing shorts. The things that have been said around me are often around my like breasts and things like fat rack often get shouted, um, which I don't, I don't really go running. That's just me walking down the street and it's happened from quite a significantly young age. Someone reported that there was a group of men working on their block of flats and they would come and knock on the women's windows and look through and like, look through when they open their curtains and shout abuse at them to the point where all the women were hiding inside the block of flats in fear. Sashank, why are you a supporter of the Our Bodies, Our Streets campaign? So I think what I should be doing as a male supporter and a male ally is, you know, not letting people I know get away with this kind of behaviour and making sure that stuff like catcalling doesn't happen. You know, I think a lot of men can perceive that as harmless because it's not physical and it's not violent. But it still, at the end of the day, makes a woman feel uncomfortable. And it's recognising that and, you know, having a conversation with friends. Have you actually done that? And how was it? Did it work? Definitely. And I, after they say, you know, this is I did this because it's funny or because I thought it's cool and I want to impress my friends, I said, well, you don't need to do that and that's not appropriate. You need to think about how you're making someone else feel. And Evie and Caitlin, is this every day for you? Does it feel like an everyday occurrence? It's not necessarily that the comments are every day. They are regular, but the fear is every day. It's leaving the house and not knowing what's going to happen to you, who could come round the corner. It's walking alone and is that man following you behind you or is he just walking? It's the fear that's every day. I would say the effects of it are also every day. Um, I think we've come a long way in actually connecting those, all the different types of violence, including uh, what would be perceived as low level, to domestic violence, to sexual assault. And I think we're really at a turning point where uh, most people are realising that all those things are actually linked and that they can't be separated. They want sexual harassment on the streets made a specific crime and an end to it being seen as part of a woman's life. Well, being a woman in power certainly doesn't insulate you from harassment and abuse. One Labour MP, Rushnara Ali, lived in constant fear after one of her constituents, Hussein Shah, bombarded her with hundreds of abusive emails, threatening to go to her office with a handgun. He was sentenced to a three-year community order this week. In her first TV interview since, she told me about her ordeal. This was someone who uh, was coming into my office. He was sending messages, threats to kill, and the threats just got worse and worse. Uh, members of my staff were feeling extremely unsafe because he was loitering around outside our offices. I just had this, this, this thing looming over me all the time. The police um, uh, was brought in because it just got worse, uh, uh, you know, over a period of months. Uh, and of course, this is co the, these sorts of cases are have an added complication when there are mental health issues involved with somebody who's stalking you. This went on for 18 months. So I just wonder what kind of toll that took on you and your staff to be besieged with this. It's hard to describe how that feels because you know, you're constantly concerned about other people. Um, and I, I've experienced some of this uh, stuff over the course of my political career. And so I was sort of prepared to some extent in terms of being guarded, 
But other people in my life, family members and, of course, staff and young staff, often young women, uh, you know, are not prepared for this sort of onslaught. And that's why it's very important that we provide the interventions early, which is what I'm calling for. Mental health interventions uh, where there's a dimension there, which in this case there was. Interventions for courts to take action quickly and the police to be given the powers to intervene so that it doesn't escalate and become much more serious, which it did in this case. So many women have been sharing their concerns for their own safety following the disappearance of Sarah Everard and her tragic death. Um, the government has said it is open to new laws. It wants to hear from women. So which new laws would you like the government to bring in to keep women safe? First of all, my thoughts are with Sarah Everard's family in this incredibly difficult uh, uh, situation. And what this case has highlighted is the experiences that women across the country have had in their lives. Most women have been harassed. Uh, many have been stalked. So the government needs to look at these issues across the board in terms of making sure that, for instance, in relation to stalking, that they strengthen legislation uh, by having a national register as Baroness Royal as is proposing in the House of Lords, that they tackle misogyny through legislation, that they provide additional support to the support services in policing, in the court system, in the criminal justice system, to make sure these crimes are taken seriously. Many women have been sharing their experiences of harassment and many wanted to attend vigils to honour Sarah Everard's memory. Should those vigils have been allowed to go ahead despite the coronavirus risks, do you think? Well, I'm really disappointed that the police were not able to work with the campaign groups to come up with a solution. I think it's really important for us to be able to come together as a country to recognise what's happened. But I will certainly be joining with people across our country and I encourage everyone to take part in the vigil from outside our homes to shine a light uh, after this tragic, uh, uh, this is, this tragic incident. Rishnara Ali, thanks very much.